how much studio headphone do you get for 199 9 when Head, that's H-E-D-D, -D, sent me these headphones to take a look at, I don't think this is the video they had in mind because I'm gonna talk up front about the very thing I think most of you will be discussing in the comments down below. And that is, do you need to spend almost 2000 US dollars on a pair of studio headphones to get a good mix? And my answer to that is no, of course you don't. Many of you, in fact, even if you're splashing out, won't even spend a quarter of that on a pretty decent pair of headphones and you'll probably get a very decent result. So relax, be calm. This is not a video where I'm gonna be trying to sell you something. We will be taking a look at these very interesting headphones, however, and although I will put a link in the description down below, it's not an affiliate link. I won't be making any money out of it whatsoever. And as you've probably guessed, Head are not sponsoring this video. However, this video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. Now, despite everything I've said about the need for these headphones, that doesn't mean I don't think they're incredibly interesting. In fact, they're very innovative, both in terms of their design, but also in the very way they actually produce sound and send it to your ears. Now, I'm gonna delay gratification and talk about the sound aspect a little bit later on. But first of all, let's look at the design. Let's face it. You won't be winning any fashion contests with these headphones. They're absolutely huge, aren't they? But I'll tell you what, despite that, I found them to be really comfortable and they didn't feel heavy. Now, I think a big part of that is because of this innovative headband design they have. We're gonna discuss that in detail a little bit later on. But it's also because of the materials they've chosen. They've used things like carbon fiber and magnesium to really bring the weight down. In fact, the previous generation weighed around about 718 grams. They've now got them down to 550 grams. That's a 25% weight loss. Pretty good going. Now, some of the comfort also comes from these really thick, plush and shaped ear pads as well. And you do get a spare set of these in the accessories tray. Now, let's just sidetrack a little bit and talk about the packaging and the accessories tray. Look, I've got around about 30 pairs of headphones or so, some of them running into the thousands of dollars. But I've got to say, these headphones have by far the best packaging that I've seen. Not only the overall packaging, but you get things like this accessories tray, which is nicely laid out with um, your spare pads there. You've got some different braided cables, a whole bunch of connectors, probably more than you'll need. And look, I wouldn't call it decadent, but it's certainly a little bit over the top, which is really nice. You also get a carrying case as well, which is a sort of a semi-hard case. And I think that's something you'd want for a pair of headphones as expensive as this if you're going from, say, studio to studio. You don't want to get them easily damaged. So yeah, look, 10 out of 10 for the packaging. It makes no difference to the sound whatsoever. However, when you spend this amount of money, you probably expect a little bit of extra effort and they gave it. Now, of course, sound is the most important thing, but also for critical listening in a studio, you want them to be super comfortable because you could be using them for extended periods of time. As I mentioned earlier, I think some of the comfort of these is to do with this nice soft kind of leatherette headband. And like a lot of other headphones, you can make adjustments with the straps here to adjust the height. So you can make sure that the cups are at the right height for your ears. But what I've not seen on any other headphone at all are these other straps, which adjust the clamping force. So that is the amount of pressure you're feeling on the side of your head from these headphones. This is a really significant factor in comfort because it can feel very, very oppressive if headphones are too tight. If you're wearing them for a number of hours, perhaps, you don't want to be noticing that too much. Of course, with other headphones, you're kind of stuck with the clamp force that you get with them, but these are adjustable. Now, I've got a kind of a medium sized head, I suppose, um, but I did notice that there's quite a lot of adjustment either way from where they're comfortable for me. So I think these are gonna be suitable for the big heads amongst you as well as the 
little heads as well. But seriously, um, quite an innovative design. I think it's something they either have or they're trying to get patented. And I'm not surprised because I bet a lot of manufacturers wouldn't mind copying this idea and making all of their headphones more comfortable. Now, the vast majority of studio headphones, even when you spend many hundreds of dollars, use the same basic technology, dynamic drivers. Sometimes if you spend a little more, you'll get something called planar magnetic drivers as well. But these use something different again, AMT or air motion transformer drivers. And you may have noticed these as tweeters in some studio monitors like the Adam Audio ones behind me. And there's perhaps no surprise in that when we find out that the founder of Head was also the founder of Adam Audio many years ago. He obviously loves AMT drivers. They're sometimes described as ribbon drivers because of this kind of ribbon with all of the folds that we can see in it. Now they've innovated this further with these headphones with something called variable velocity transformer. Now with these, the folds are not even like they were before with regular AMTs. Instead, they've got different widths and heights. And this apparently helps for a better frequency range. Now these headphones range from 10 Hertz all the way down there, lower than human hearing can go, all the way up to 40 kilohertz. Again, higher than human hearing can go. So a really wide frequency range. So how does this technology affect the sound? Well, in a couple of basic different ways. Now, before we do finally talk about sound, I'd like to remind you that if you're releasing your music to places like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, etc., check out the link in the description down below for our sponsor, DistroKid. If you use that VIP link, you'll get 7% off your first year of membership. Now, the first way you'll probably notice this technology affects the sound is actually with the loudness. To put it bluntly, you really need a lot of juice to drive these headphones. I think they've got an SPL rating of around about 89 decibels, which means if you plug them into the headphone socket of most audio interfaces, including all of the ones I tried here in my studio, they're not gonna be driven hard enough. So you really do need a headphone amplifier as well. Now on Head's website, they recommend three of in various sort of price ranges, but they're really reasonably expensive, I would say, but you could take a look at those. Now for me personally, I was using a really humble ART headphone amplifier, which I've got in the rack behind me here, but that produced more than enough output to drive these headphones so I was able to test them. But do take into account if you happen to decide to buy these headphones that just plug them straight into your Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, it's not gonna work. I mean, why would you do that anyway? Okay, now the most important part, but the most difficult part to describe, because I'm gonna talk about sound now in the same way a wine connoisseur tries to describe the taste of a wine with equally ambiguous and sort of fluffy terms. But here we go, I'm gonna give it my best shot. The first word that comes to mind with these is natural. Now, what do I mean by that? So if you've ever gone from headphones to your studio monitors, you know how you suddenly feel a little bit more sort of relaxed? Everything sort of breathes a bit more and it feels more natural. It doesn't feel quite as oppressive. Well, that's more like the experience you get with these as headphones compared to other headphones. They're much more of a, I'm going to cautiously use the word pleasure here. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but um, they're much more of a pleasure to listen to compared to many, many other headphones that I've used. They feel more natural to me. They also feel a lot more detailed. So they've got a really fast transient response to them. And particularly in the mid to high frequencies, I can basically just hear things uh, because of that, I feel. Um, that you can't hear on some other headphones at all. So they're revealing things about my mix, not just in those high frequencies, uh, certainly in the mid to high frequencies, that they're revealing things that I just don't think I could hear on a lot of other headphones. Of course, 
It's very, very useful for critical mixed listening when you need to make decisions about things. Now, finally, in a slightly more negative way, I would describe the low end as less fulfilling, but equally natural. Now, that's because it's not hyped in any way. And of course, if you know anything about studio headphones, you don't want things to be hyped. You don't want them to be exaggerated like you often hear them um, with like consumer headphones and things like that. Definitely feels like with the low end, you do need to drive it a bit. And if you were using these for pleasure at all, you'd probably definitely be boosting the low frequencies a little bit to give you a little bit more Oomph. But uh, as I say, when you're making crit critical mixed decisions, you don't necessarily want like a hyped low end. And these don't deliver that. Whether that's a plus or a negative to you is a little bit to do with your taste in studio headphones. But for me, it's wonderful. I can hear the low frequencies, the bass, the kick and everything really nicely. I believe, because I listened to a few mixes that I really like and have listened to for a long time, I believe it's also pretty honest that I can confidently make reasonable decisions about the low end using these headphones. Now, all of that being said, is the, and I've definitely been complimentary towards the sound of this, right? But is that difference in sound like twice as good as something that costs half the price? Well, no. But let's talk about that. <laughs> On Sunday mornings in my neighborhood, I often see men of my kind of vintage wearing lycra and riding around on bicycles, but not the kind of bicycle that I might buy from Target, which would cost around about maybe two or three hundred dollars. But no, bicycles that cost many thousands of dollars. Now, do they need those bicycles to get from A to B? No, they don't. Do those bicycles, which perhaps cost 20 times as much as my Target bike, get them there 20 times faster? No, they don't. Perhaps, perhaps a small percentage faster. Do those bicycles mean that they're going to enter the Tour de France anytime soon? No, they're not going to be doing that. This is probably just a hobby for them. But I'm sure you've seen many examples like this in fields of interest where people are really passionate about what they do and they want to squeeze the very last few percentage points of improvement of what they're doing and they don't mind spending quite a lot more to do that. I think that these headphones definitely fall into that category. Most of you maybe don't even have the $2,000 you'll need to buy them. Others will probably find that there's priorities perhaps that they'd rather take care of in their studio before they spend this amount on headphones. But once you've done all that and you've got some spare cash and you really want to squeeze the last few drops of quality out of your mix, then I'd say that these should surely be on your shopping list. That's my opinion. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below, by the way, about you or a member of your family who spend way too much on certain objects, musical or not. I wouldn't mind betting that a few of you have spent a little bit more on guitars than you could possibly justify. <laughs> Love to hear about that. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget the links in the description and I'll see you in the next video.